Some have argued it could make or break cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Others reckon it could undermine central banks in the developing world. But what could it do for your portfolio? I am Fifi Peters and this is Portfolio Watch. Tonight we take a look at how to coin Facebook's Libra and how investors should be scripting South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa's State of the Nation address into their portfolio. But first, I am joined by Richard de Sousa, senior partner at Altcoin Trader, Marius Ritz, Luno's general manager for Africa, and Richard Byworth, CEO of Diginex, to discuss the Libra offering, its value in the African market, and for African citizens. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. First of all, I thought that we opened this discussion with a, a comment and an understanding of exactly what Facebook is introducing and exactly what this innovation is going to do to the traditional banking system. So, Marius, Marius, can I begin with you? Yeah, I think Facebook announced its entrance into the cryptocurrency market recently. Um, I think this is a game changer for the cryptocurrency industry, but mm -hmm. also the broader financial services industry. Um, we at Luna recently surveyed 7,000 people across emerging markets, and the key takeaway for us from this research was that um, where money isn't just a nice to have, where people actually depend on it to secure their futures, future of their families, etc., um, they often find creative ways in maximizing the use of that. And we think in this case with this Facebook coin, which is, um, which is a, a coin that is linked to a basket of real world assets like mm -hmm. currencies, we think that, that, that if, if, if this Libra coin um, will make it easier and cheaper and, and more secure for people to transact and transfer value, we think that people and consumers across Africa will, will start using it. Um, and that should drive the long-term value of this, of this new project. Okay, I want to talk to you about why yeah. you think that uh, African consumers are likely to be the first adopters or likely to adopt this more. But Richard, I mean, I understand that you'll be able to send money as you're sending someone a photo on WhatsApp or an Instagram messenger. I mean, will it be that simple? Can you break down exactly what Libra will mean for the African consumer? Absolutely, Fifi. I think that it is such exciting times and this is massive, massive news. People are totally underestimating what is about to hit the financial sector. Mm. I mean, can you imagine, Facebook is now in the process of launching the biggest bank in the world. This has got very little to do with cryptocurrencies. It's got more to do with banking and it is more of a digital currency. But getting back to your question, absolutely. If you can send money to a person that doesn't have a bank account, that is fully financial functional in the economy because they have been enabled by LibraCoin. It is going to be a game changer, it is going to help the unbank enter the economy and it's going to help the people that are already in the economy to be able to trade and to transact like we all do. All right. I mean, Richard, bringing you into this conversation now, uh, the talks that Facebook is now entering the banking fray, uh, quite a number of partners um, it is going into this, this innovation with, none of them being banks, which has also raised concerns because some ask, you know, perhaps if a bank or two were on board, this system would be more trusted and credible. But your take on what Facebook is doing now and what this means for traditional banks. Look, to the point that Richard made earlier, this is very exciting because this is getting to the point now where Facebook, the identity that you effectively have within Facebook can be linked to payment rails and therefore you're creating banking for the un unbanked and bringing this up a level. Are banks necessarily to be trusted in bringing banking to the unbanked? They haven't got there so far. So why not a, uh, a company that is involved in the internet and taking the internet to unreached places as of yet. I mean, to give you an example, we work with uh, a group in Thailand um, and we put apps in the hand of migrant workers and they refer to the internet today as Facebook. So for them, Facebook is the internet and this is the first stage to them getting onto the internet this is now going to be a very easy way for them to get into, into sending money peer to peer and disrupting remittances around the world. So this is going to be extremely important. All right. So, I mean, they, they're already going in this with a, a, a significant base, some 2.7 or so million users. But how is it going to work? So in South Africa, I want to send my mother a couple of, of, of Libras. So what, I convert that into Rand, and then when she gets it in Libra, she converts that back into Rand. Explain the dynamics. Good question. Um, so, so my understanding is that, that the consumers will be able to, to through these partners like Visa and MasterCard, deposit uh, Rands to uh, an exchange where they will be able to buy the Libra coin then. And then if you have a WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, your, your Libra wallet or coin will then be in integrated in, in those wallets. 
um, and, and then sending, sending or transferring value from, from your Facebook account or from your WhatsApp account will be as easy as sending a, a picture um, via WhatsApp. So people will then be able to send the Libra coin to other WhatsApp or other Facebook users um, we will then be able to, to use that to transact um, yeah, and so forth. Yeah, and then at what exchange rate though? So the Libra will be linked to a basket of currency. So it, it, it'll be linked to uh, the dollar, yen, euro, uh, the, the, the pound. So, so it's, it, it should have a stable value. Um, um, unlike, unlike Bitcoin at this stage, which is driven purely by supply and demand without any physical asset backing, um, backing the currency. So, so I'm not sure what the, what the exchange rate will be at, at, at launch, but what I can say is, and that's one of the, one of the, um, the, the current uh, challenges in the, in the cryptocurrency market is price volatility, and, and that is what this coin will address, and that is perhaps why this coin will be, more, will more, will be used as a, as a medium of exchange initially mm -hmm. um, uh, compared, to, compared to investment, which is Bitcoin's biggest use case at this stage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, Richard, you spoke about the, uh, the banking side of this, and uh, I do understand the Libra Association is going to be responsible for managing this and governance and uh, everything that's, that's involved in terms of ensuring that it does remain stable um, and is not subject to the volatility that we are seeing in the likes of Bitcoin and all of that. But talk to me a little bit more about that and also how this differs from uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Will it be tradable like, like, like a Bitcoin? Okay, that's a good question, Fifi. And I think what people are failing to understand is the magnitude of this project. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is we need to stop thinking, or in the near future, we are going to stop thinking about how many rands is a Libra coin. It's not going to matter. People are going to trade in Libra coin. People are going to turn around and say, I don't want rands. I don't want dollars. Facebook is going to be the global currency. Mm. So it's, we're not going to care what it is to the rand. We're going to have people saying, I just want Libra coin. It is going to be a currency that you can use throughout the world. It's going to be a currency you can send throughout the world with little or no fees. So this idea that we want to know how much rand it's worth <coughs> is going to fall away. That is why this is so big. This is an extremely massive and an extremely scary project because what we need to also understand is that this has got the potential to dominate the entire financial landscape and change everything that we know. So I think we're asking the wrong questions when we say, how's it going to be stable? Everything else is going to have to be stable to Libra coin. Mm -hmm. Getting back to um, uh, cryptocurrencies and your second part of the question, Bitcoin is different because it is still in its infancy. I know it's been 10 years in the market, but Bitcoin still needs to find where it is pegged at and what the value is. Also in time, but not as quick as Facebook coin, we're going to see that Bitcoin has its own value and we're going to say, how many Bitcoin is a dollar worth or, mm -hmm. or so on. So things are going to switch around. It's not going to be the, the way things were before. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, again, to bring you in this conversation, uh, the, you, the, talking about the magnitude of this project and how it uh, stands to, to be a game changer for the financial sector. Of course, uh, the regulatory concerns around, around Facebook specifically, but also around managing people's money come to the fore here. How do you see them tackling this? And especially with the, the, the legacy of not being the best in handling uh, personal data and and, and abiding by regulation. In, I'm talking about Facebook specifically. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Regulators are going to have a lot to say about this. And this is what we're already starting to see as, as the early launch happened. Regulators have got involved and started to say, actually, no, we need to think about this. We need to understand how this is going to work. And to your point, you know, Facebook has had its own trust issues recently. So handling people's money, handling or potentially replacing sovereign currency around the world is going to be an issue. It's going to be something that governments care about and not, other, not all governments are going to take to it too kindly. But, um, but so enough, it's going enough, to be... An, it, Richard, just to stop you there, care enough about to, 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 to block it or care enough to, to embrace it and perhaps we finally see a situation where cryptocurrencies are recognized as a, a legitimate asset class? Look, I think there are many countries in the world that do care about what happens with money transfers in their country. You know, China and India being two massive countries where this could have significant impact. So early stage, I think China and India are going to block it. Um, but then, you know, it's going to be an iterative process for Facebook to get the regulators comfortable with it and potentially have a, 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 an iterated form of Libra within those countries. Um, and then, you know, you may have Libra for India, Libra for China, and then the government has some sort of input on it. But this is going to be an evolution. 
Okay, Marius, you said at the top of the conversation that you believe that uh, people in developing countries, or particularly here in Africa, are going to be um, early movers, adopters of this. Explain why in comparison to others in developed countries. Yes, yeah, so, um, so I think in, in Africa we see, we see a couple of, of, of issues. So firstly is financial inclusion. So people, um, the lack of access to, to bank accounts, for, for one. In this specific case, you only need internet connection, right? So if you have a WhatsApp application on your phone, or if you have Facebook Messenger, you'll be able to receive uh, the Libra coin uh, uh, um, and receive it as a means of payment or, 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 or receive it um, from, from friends in another country for remittance or for, for whatever reason. Secondly, um, I think the cost uh, currently, so the cost of remittance is extremely high. The current remittance, mm. the size of the market in Africa is estimated to be worth $40 billion. And if you take 10% average fee for remittance, that's $4 billion US dollars of, of lost fees that could have been accrued to, to the end users, right? So, so as I said earlier, if people see, um, see this Libra coin, um, if they see more use in it in terms of the, the cost of transfers, in terms of the ease of, of transacting, mm -hmm. they will start using it. And I think what's important to mention is this will be driven from a grassroots level. So consumers will start using this. Mm -hmm. um, the network effects, or the possibility of network effects here is, is massive. It's absolutely massive with Facebook's 2.7 billion customers mm -hmm. across the world. So if people start using this, uh, it'll be like the internet almost uh, in, the, in the 90s and in the 2000s. If they see value in this, they will use it. And, and nothing really will be able to stop this from spreading. Yeah, and I can see the, 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 the bottom line appeal for Facebook because if me, many people are using it, then you've got a case whereby, you know, advertisers and all sorts of people would want to jump on board because I understand that you can even buy stuff. It's not necessarily just about sending money. Which brings me to the question, in my portfolio, should I be buying more Facebook shares now given how big this is going to be and selling my banking or traditional banking shares? H how do I play this? I certainly would be uh, paying attention to this and probably buying Facebook shares. There's no doubt that that would be a good move, bearing in mind that uh, this is just my opinion. But what a lot of people don't seem to realize is the Libra coin itself is not going to be an investment coin. This is going to be a coin that you trade with. And it is rumored that um, Facebook or the Libra Association is bringing out a second coin. Now that second coin is going to be issued to the elite initially and it won't be available to the public. But that is a coin that people need to invest in because that is going to um, benefit from the assets that the Libra coin is holding. Uh, the interest rates raised on those assets will um, inflate the price of those coins. So that secondary coin, if those rumors are true, that is coming out, that is the coin to look for and that is the coin to invest in, in my opinion. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for those insights. We will leave it there. I think many of us will have to wait until the second half of 2020 to see if this coin actually comes on board, which is the deadline when it is supposed to launch. But thanks to my guest, Richard de Sousa, senior partner at Altcoin Trader, Marius Ritz, who is the LUNO's general manager for Africa, and also Richard Byworth, CEO of DigiNext.